ايه يا اختي نيت لك ديوان بالشيش وجين خاصتي يا خانا اتاتا وي تخوتان اديش تو تل تو يا يا شنجت وان قلين زاتينا خايتي شكشنيك يا اتلين اتوي قزتي هيو قتنجي توت وان قلين او شخيل يا خيتي اديش تو تل تو يا اتوي اختو سكو يا خانا اشكشني كلين ادات يجي تني اخو اوي اوهان وي سينجت يو ختنجي كو ات تو يا هاتو وسكو وي اشكشني كلين قزتي اشكشني كزكو اشكشني كيدي شكوى اشكشني كيدي وجين غختو تو اقا اوي اشكشني كزكو اقا شا دانغ خيتخ دوخ اي دي غختو سا اخ دوش کشنی کی آیا قبولی دی قبولی دی خصتی آنگون دخ اوه که قبول قبول یدو ساق هست آنی تو کیش اوه خش قاو خنخوی چشگو آدای آیا هس شکبوش نیگ نیا یا شکوزی ات اوه اچ أجوي وان قنينس تشوكو يدخ ايا ويقوو تشوكو يخ ايا يو هز خوشاتك يه اوه شنجت يو خطنجي خشنجت هندتاني يشكشنيك تاقا يو دو ساقو اد قشتكت وي تاقا قني ايا هز ينشتيخ يا تاق اي تيقو اد قني ايا هز أسقق وتسين أقاوي التكت يد أيا هس كغخ هس كغخ ييج يا أوى هذا شيء شو هان ريكاب كاو أيا what was I talking about I'm saying something about the levels of the story. And yeah. You're having the baby version and the teenage version and the full version. Yes. So there's a project that I've been working on and several other language teachers where we take like a full version of a story and then cut it down to 50 lines and cut it down to 20 lines. And then when we cut it down, we also sometimes like simplify some stuff. So the idea is to use a story so that it becomes familiar and then to build it up. So uh, we're going to go through an example of that with Tonk. Uh, Kawu was the one who told it? Uh, Sha Dong uh -huh. told it, but his nephew was Khash uh -huh. And it's really interesting how they tell stories the same way. Uh, not Something about being on Angoon or maybe told around. Yes. Angoon. So he's from Angoon, but he was actually from Kaku, which is Basket Bay. Basket Bay. So he's from Basket Bay. That's why they're called Kakuidi, the people of Basket Bay. But they moved, I think, in the 19, 1904, maybe. They moved from Basket Bay to Angoon. Angoon, because their kids had to go to school. There's no school in Basket Bay, uh, but there's some really great stories out of there. Anything else you guys got? Something else like it's like a tondi. Yeah, yeah. So like that's the way that the language works and the thought world works is People from the same places tend to talk the same way. And then people who were raised by someone, you know, like Khashqa, who probably heard all these stories from Shah Dog, which is why his name is Robert Zuba, which is why uh, they told stories in the same way. It was really neat to sort of do that. And then one of them, Yisekuke Seideya. I don't know if any of you have been studying long enough to know Seideya. 
We might know Sapia. There's two of them. They're from Atlin. Uh, the one, she was a little teacher of mine in the early 2000s. And her English name was Mary Anderson. And then her mother was also named Sapia, and her name was Elizabeth Nyman. So I had talked to Mary Anderson a lot. Then the first time I heard a recording of Elizabeth Nyman, I was like, no, that's Mary Anderson, because they talked exactly the same. Same pitch, same tone, same way of speaking Tlingit. So that kind of stuff is really fun. Like when you learn enough Tlingit that you can listen to people and see who sounds like whom. You know, it's really neat. I also talked a little bit about the way that we study Tlingit. I think it's helpful to always to break it into these pieces, right? But then sometimes you only see it as these broken pieces. So then we go to the stories to get the big things and start to see how it gets put together. So that's why we're going to spend today just looking at Tangha. So we're going to look at three different versions of it. Uh, the Yeti version, the Katsuku version, and then the, the Klein, Shkatnik Klein. So that's going to be the process is um, a 20 line version. I think it's actually a 30 line. Because I think what I was trying to do was beginning and preschool levels were 20 lines, intermediate and up to probably elementary school levels are 30 lines, advanced and high school levels would be 50 lines, and then the full-on thing would be as long as the story is. And it's a real challenge to figure out what to cut, and it's also a real challenge to figure out how to simplify it because storytelling does involve like pretty rich forms of language. So any thoughts or questions before we start? Okay. So the way we will uh, do this, <laughs> um, the bottom is a Raven Eats the Mosquito design. Uh, it's owned by the Central Council of Clinton Haida. So I was just graduated from a master's program in 2011, I think. It was kind of between jobs and transitioning. Uh, I think I was moving actually from, maybe I was still in Fairbanks. Maybe it was 2010. Can't remember. Uh, but they reached out and they wanted like to commission like a whole bunch of designs. It was a really neat project, and so I did a bunch of designs for them that they're still using uh, today. At one point, spill a little bit of chayu, chayu. <laughs> I left. I left the project. We went back and forth, and I said, "Well, I bought." I sketched up this concept. I said, I've always wanted to do one of these Haida Archelite pipe type designs where like all these figures are really just smushed into each other. <laughs> Someone said, well, I don't know if they're going to want a Haida design. I said, aren't you clicking the Haida? What are you doing? I said, well, I don't know. So then I just wait. I did a couple other designs and I said, well, I've always wanted to do one of these clinket panel designs where all the figures are just smooshed together. And I said the exact same thing, but I said clinket panel. And I said, oh, sounds great. <laughs> End of discrimination already. Okay. Anyways, uh, so this is Taka. Um, Taka is a mosquito. Do we know how that word works? Ah would be a what? And then ah would be a what? So the ah, there is, uh, so we've been working on pronouns a little bit, right? We do khat wa e hu, uhan, yuhan, has, ah, i, du, ha, yi, has, du. And then we're starting to get into verbs with those six, right? Uh, but there's more than six, right? Like there's, th that's just the starter pack, right? So one of them is ah. That's the thing that does the thing, right? The thing that does the, 
It is in this case, yes. So usually this ah uh, is often an object pronoun. So we go object, subject, verb. And ah uh, as an object pronoun means some of them. So the fancy word for it is partitive. So you could say ah uh, I ate some. So you can use it to say like there's still some there. I didn't eat all of them, right? Or you could say, there, maybe there's a group of people over there, and you might ask me, Hasyasakuke, do you know them? I might say, Hasakhwasaku, I know some of them. I know some of them. And so it's not the most common thing, but it does have its uses and stuff like that. And you'll, you'll see it pop up now and then. But there's an interesting construction of a noun. There's different ways to make nouns in Tlingit. And one of them is to take a verb root and then jump the object pronoun actually to the other side of it. And it's actually a little bit different. It's like a kind of a different pronoun, but related. And that means the one or ones who do that verb root. So gucha is to scoop up water, like especially with a ladle or a cup. So it's the one that ladles, right, or scoops up water. Shita, uh, shit is to slide. So the one that slides is the name for a knife. Chuta, chut is to chip or adds. So it's the one that adds. Is. Um, somebody told me today they were watching a program and they said, the ads was invented 2,000 years ago by these Kleifka. And I was like, come on. Got jade ads is that are so old. Anyways, uh, kuhida is the cylindrical, so the ku part is cylindrical, the cylindrical one that furrows, so you make furrows on a piece of paper. Uh, and on and on, right, there's a whole bunch of them. Tia is the one that chisels. So in this case, what do you think tag is? It's the one that Bites, right? That's biting. Uh, so a mosquito bites. Okay. Sha dog kaitakshkashnik kaitikhuuyes. So uh, the idea here is Sha uh, dog is the name of Robert Zuboff. That's a slinket name. Kaitak. Do we recognize what the two parts are in that? Mouth. Mouth. Mouth one, right? So from the mouth of, right? So chaydach. So this has a bunch of different uses, like right? where we heard this, um, like if I learn some new phrase, right? And you, it might say from the mouth of my auntie. This is also what we use to talk about recording people. We usually say, I'm going to write it from your mouth, which means I'll write what you say. Shkachnik is a story. Uh, it's a noun that comes from a verb. Shkaglenik, they were telling stories. Then we've got a couple different ways to talk about different levels of learners. When do, what's... When do we use uh, shakadink versus klegu? Uh, well, klagu. Yeah, okay, so klagu is usually like a really ancient story. But I think, here's where I think the difference comes in. So if you say yeh shkashnik, yin uh maybe I should write this down. No. Okay. So if I were to say, "Yes, shkashnik, yin, kak kashanik," so that's saying. Anybody know what that says? 
told you all yes so um if we wanted to sort of break this into its pieces right because whenever we translate from Shinget to English or English to Shinget, we kind of get into this Nakhtekli area, which is octopus tentacles, where like this is a tentacle, this is a tentacle, and this is a tentacle. And by that, like I borrow this idea from Hoynes, where they say these things have to stay together, but you can move them around a little bit. Right? I could say, Yinka Koshanik, Yeshkashnik, Yeshkashnik. It's getting a little awkward there. But, uh, and this is technically with you all. And then I will tell it. And it's usually a story. So if I said this, that means I intend to tell you one raven story. Raven and the herring, raven and the whale, raven and the bear. Uh, but if I took this so this same thing and I change this to Kutlak. This is a little different. And this is where maybe we can start to see the difference between Shkashnik and Klaku. So Klaku is um, <clears throat> usually translated as a myth or an ancient tale. But this is how I think maybe we can get to the bottom of it. So this is, I would say, a raven cycle. It's probably how I translate it. So when we say yesh kutak, that means you're going to sit there, and I will tell raven and his uncle, raven makes illusions, raven and fire, raven and water, raven and the salmon, raven and the tide, raven deceives uh, his brother, raven and the killer whales, raven hosts a potlatch, raven and the box of daylight. It's, and they got to be in that order. So it's like, and then there's actually, and when you listen to storytellers, how they tell this, sometimes they'll go, ah, and they'll go right into the next one. Or sometimes they'll just be a little pause. Or sometimes they'll just go straight into them. So they roll right into each other. So it's a cycle of stories that are connected. So I think Kagu would probably be someone who did a whole series of things. And we're going to talk about that. Like maybe we'll talk about the migration of the Shukach Adi. That would be a taku, because it's not a single story. It's like, okay, we went here, there was a flood, then we went up here, and then we came down, and then we went over here. So it's like this whole series where each of those could be seen as a single story. Oh. Ah, good question. Okay. So uh, talking about like who these are for. So this is, um, I wrote, this is for the seedlings. Right? No matter where, if you're like a beginner or if you're like a little kid, I'm trying not to be like, uh, I'm using a tree metaphor. It's going to be a KD, it's going to be as, yeti, and then there's going to be as. And so maybe we can use a different one because I know I've used like in the water or towards the mountain. So I'm like, I like to mix my metaphors. Okay. So we're going to switch to Shinget through this whole story. And then when we come back through, you will all have a chance to. Read the lines and then we'll talk about them. For the first part, I'll say it, you repeat, then when we, and we're going to do some vocabulary. I'll say it, you repeat. When we get to the story, I'll say the whole story and then we'll go through and I'll have you folks read one line at a time. <laughs> Teach, Taka 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 Achun Achun 
Achtun. Achtun. Awachtun. 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 Yet Good Yak uakut 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 Yak a cock cook quashi. A cock cook quashi. A cock a shahist, a shower hitch, a shower hitch, a shower hitch, a shuck quah hitch, a shuck Yik quaskeet. Yik quaskeet. Ah, ya anastain. Ah, ya anastain. Ah, ya anastain. Ah, ya anastain. Ah, ausata. Ah, ausata. Ah, ausata. Ah, ausata. Ah, a gursata. Ah, a gursata. Ah, a gursata. Ach, a Kay a quashat. Shoot at the ark. Shoot at the ark. Shoot out the ark. Shoot out the ark. Shoot 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 Ooh, 
Astacht. 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 Hey, <coughs> what is Kusachakon in English? I'll do a vocabulary check here. Cannibal. Cannibal. Anybody know what gutil is? <clears throat> That's the name of the cannibal in this store. Not very many people know it has a name, gutil. And this is gutil. That's a it's very scary. What is kusa? Club. Kus has one other meaning. Anybody know it? The crab apple tree. Not the apple, but the tree. There's two words I know of where the name of a tree is also the name of a tool. Anybody know the other one? I want to guess. The word is sex. Have you ever heard that? It's a tool and a tree. Sex kachunate team. Our took. Any guesses now? Sex kachunate team. I would took. What did I just do? Sucks. Kachunate team. I would bow. It's a bow, like a bow and arrow. And what kind of tree? I don't know if you guys can get it. Anybody want to guess? An elm? No. It's an unusual tree. It's a rare tree that's certainly in Southeast Alaska, only in the southern part, as far as I know. Is it a willow? It's not a willow. It's a notch. Maybe maple? It's not a maple. It's a cedar. It's not a cedar. That's too common. There's chach is red cedar, and chai is yellow cedar. And they're not, it's gotta be a strong, really strong wood, too. Hemlock? It's young. Yeah. And it's all, it's in northern, you know. Ooh, it's tree day. Ash? Yuck. Not ash. What is it? Yuck. Cottonwood? Yuck. No, that's a northern thing as well. But okay, I'll tell you this about duck. Duk is, as far as I know, only in northern Tlingit country. When you go to the interior, they have another tree, which in English is called poplar, and that is also called duk. And that's very confusing to me. I was like, how could they have the same name? And I said, that's just how it is. Wait, wait. so is it a tree that has the same name as a poplar but isn't a poplar it's a hardwood it's mostly in the northern range yeah we, and in the interior they'd also call it a poplar but it's not a poplar i went off <laughs> on a cottonwood poplar <laughs> distraction it is a southern town in southern Tlingit territory it's rare it's not related to cottonwood it has needles and its English name is a three-letter word. <laughs> ah. Oh, no. It has needles? Yes. As far as I know. You? Yes. What, you. What, 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 what? There are you in... So oh. And in Sweden. My uncle got a bunch of them over there. They were going to cut down these trees so people could see the Alps. 
He's like, what are you going to do with it? Like, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, adds this out. Y E W. Okay, we got kids of our store. What's this one? Bag. Bag. This one. String something. String. So it's an, well, it's another one of these things where like take a son, where one of these kisani things just becomes a noun. Atcha kisani snacks. Take kisani pebbles. Take kisani string. It could be one piece of string, but it's still called take kisani. Isn't also just tik? That's rope. Oh yes. Yeah. So then the the difference of so getting to string, and then there's did we talk about zas in here? It's one of my favorite trans language sort of terms. So, since we're doing stories, I got to talk about zas. What is zas? Everybody know that one? I don't think there's a good English term for it, but. There's a really neat sort of trend. You can watch how English words change, right? Pre-1970s, you could translate the word zas as thong. From 1970s to probably the 1990s, however, the English word thong became a flip-flop sandal. In the 1990s until today, the word thong has become string underwear. So zas, I guess you would translate as leather thonging. But if you're in Canada, you can call it babiche. But I don't think Americans use that word, babiche. So zas, uh, so you get take isani, take and so like, let's talk about the difference between these, right? So tik is you have to, there's a verb root, a kausitik. They made it into rope. You have to braid it into rope. So that's, that's the difference between tik and other things. So then tik isani, it's string, but it's also probably braided together, like a lot of string is. Tus comes from a tussy, which would be the sinew. So tus comes from the word for sinew, and that's the word for thread. Zas, you would take a piece of hide, and I think you would cut like really a strip about maybe that wide, and then it would then you could pull it like if you ever made a drum, you're going to use zas, and that's what you're going to use to tie it together on the inside. If you ever made snowshoes, you're going to use zas, like the old way of doing it. So there's my zas tangent. Okay, I better hurry up. What's this? Ashes. Yeah. This? The thing that bites. The biter. It's a mosquito. And what is this? Hunting. Hunting. And what is it doing? Why is there three of them? Hunting now. You hunted and you're going to hunt. Yes. Hunting, hunted, going to hunt. So we have imperfective, perfective future. I'm trying to test like how am I finding the right pictures? Sisyphus. Huh? Isn't that the tale of Sisyphus? Maybe. I don't know that story. The guy who like continually pushes the boulder up the hill that never makes it. Oh, maybe. Okay. What might this verb be? I don't know how to find something for this verb. That's why the there was. Oils? Huh? The toil? That's pretty close. Push? Huh? Push. Push. You know, I, okay, it doesn't have to do with the action. It has to do with uh, describing what they're doing. Like, what they're doing is blank. Effort. If it's not oh. toil. Not really effort. Suffering? No. Heavy? Challenging? Difficult. Difficult. What 
could I use instead to say difficult? I don't really know. Well, that's the word, it's difficult. Yes, it's difficult. <clears throat> it was difficult. It will be difficult. The verb root here means hardened or frozen. And it also can be used to like tense up your muscles, like if you need to hold something so it doesn't spill. What's this one talking about? Okay. Walking has rock going to rock. Yes, walking, walked, will walk. How about this one? Walking towards the ocean. Walked walk. towards the ocean. Walked towards the ocean. Will walk towards the ocean. Now let me show you something. Wugut, uwagut. Those are different. Because you have a closed on ye. Close. But it's all about, so we're going to start talking more about verb. One of the things that Tlingit does mark, it says, this happened, and then it says, this happened, and it was accomplished. Right? So you can mark that you did something, and you can also sometimes, not, all, not every time, but mark, like for example, they went that direction, or let's say they went home. They went home. That's what I'm telling you. <clears throat> but if someone says, oh, the weather was bad, the roads were icy, and it was really dark, and I could say, they arrived home. So I think it will differentiate between those two things at times. So that's when we say, they went to the ocean. Not they went towards the ocean. They went to the ocean from the inland. What's this saying? Uh, they went to the ocean, they didn't walk to the ocean. Yes. Went to the ocean, didn't go to the ocean. This could also be It's not always just to the ocean. That's what it means, but it also could mean to come down from a mountain. Because if for Tlingit people, if you're coming down from a mountain, you are going towards the ocean. Unless you're heading towards another mountain. Because uh -uh. we live on, like all our villages are on the ocean. For inland Tlingit, it's probably a little different. Ask questions if you got them. And keep rolling. What's this one? Get rid of those notes. Looking, searching, looked, looking for it, searching for it, searched for it, looked for it, will search for it, will look for it. Putting the evil eye on someone, right? That's what this one is. <laughs> yeah, well, wakshit us is that one, like stink eye. But what you're supposed to do is slam them and look away. That's, that's what I was taught. That's the thing it way. It's like you look and you got to make sure they see it. Boom. It's called snapping the eyes. And then you look away, like disgusted. But no, that's not what this is. <laughs> You saw it, you will see it. They saw it, they will see it. Okay? And this has to do with like a specific thing. Right? Which we'll get to a little later. What's that one? I love it. I drew a lot of these. Like you can't really find a stick. Oh, violent. <laughs> it, it's a little bit hardcore, yes. They were hit on the head. If they were hit on the head repeatedly, they will be hit on the head repeatedly. <laughs> There's not the repeatedly. Uh -huh. So, 
they are hitting them on the head. They hit them on the head. They will hit them on the head. But there is this T. So there are certain actions in Shlinget where it is considered an action, but it's seen as like, because you might have to hit it a couple times, especially like a fish. Like you club that fish. Maybe you're going to get it first time. Maybe you got to do it a couple times. The same with, I guess I should have put a fish on there. But he was, this is in the story. He, 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 he people do club people. And the head is built into here. So that's why you see sh in each of these forms. Because that's specific. <coughs> so club them in the head. And so that's club, not necessarily just hit. Yeah, this so is. It's more of a club, not. Right. There's an instrument here. Is it Spider Man? We do we He's falling. He yes. fell, he will fall. Yes. Falling, fell, will fall. Uh, let me check something real quick, too. I got to stop the screen share. OK. I had to make sure my original sound was on. What about this? Testing our my drawing skills and your logic skills. Let's see what happens. He's picking the fish up. I feel like he's chasing the fish. Picking up something <laughs> that was once. And then, and then, and then gets it. Picking up a dead, uh, a dead thing. Oh yeah. Or it has eyes on its eyes. So that's why you get the little X eye, right? A dead thing or. What else? A sleeping baby, or it could be an unconscious thing. But I think an unconscious, like a knocked out thing, yes. But it's, it's a sleeping baby or an unconscious could thing. Could it be someone, something that was drugged? Yes. Yeah. If someone was like, yeah, or someone just got knocked out because earlier somebody hit them. So maybe they got hit him <laughs> and, and you picked them up. So yes, all, all three of these would work sequentially. <laughs> And we'll assume that they're just unconscious and not, not a goner. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so we do have specific, we haven't really gotten into handling verbs, but this is one of them. It's to carry a dead or unconscious living, well, thing. And it doesn't matter how that dead unconscious thing is shaped? Well, I guess yes. if you cut it up into a bag, it would be different. It would be. It would still be a body. Okay. In this case, it has to be a body. In that case. Sorry, I don't want to traumatize anybody. Um, but I know things in think it, the handling verbs change as the object shape changes. Yes, I was asking. So you do. Ha okay, whip. Not we just have to go there. So let's talk about handling verbs really quick. I said it was story thing. Every day is concept day. All right, hold on. Had anyone who watches begin kink it and enter me is there a wonder about me? Because I was also asking about if humans could be lay. Uh -huh. Okay. So we're going to switch resources to house and We're going to talk about handling verbs for a second. I'm going to make this bigger on the screen. So a handling verb means usually to carry something, right? And there's two different sort of logical things that meet each other here. One of them is Tlingit will tell you how to carry it by which verb you, it's going to use. That's why the verb changes, because like you got to carry it this way. You can't just carry it any old way. It's going to spill. you got to carry it with two hands. And so it does code that stuff. The other thing it talks about is what type of motion you're going to have. And there's generally ongoing motion, motion that comes to an end. 
That's why you had Wugut and Uwugut. So here you've got two logical systems at play, which is why it gets tricky. So we're not going to deal with the different types of motions. We'll just deal with like whether there's a prefix, a classifier, and a root. And we'll learn a lot about this stuff, right? So they'll all have a verb root. They'll all have a classifier. They might have a prefix. And this prefix has meaning. K is, well, there's three types of K, which is, can be frustrating. But the two that we're going to be dealing with here is a spherical or round object or a horizontal surface. So this one, like you see, you go from ti, which is a rock, like a general object, to sati, which is a complex object, like a belt or a cell phone. Uh, kati, which would be a round thing, like a basketball or an apple. Kasati, which would be a hoop-like object, like a bracelet. Jiti would be a rope that you're going to grab one of the ends of and carry it over to someone, like if you're tying up a boat. Uh, Jikati would be coiled up rope because you have to carry it so it doesn't uncoil. Jiksati would be uncoiled rope-like stuff because you got to just kind of scoop it. Tan is an empty container. Sa'in is a container with contents that is spillable. So that, because we had these little fruit cups, and we said, achjit sa'in, and the elder said, achjit te. We're like, what? There's something in it. They said, they tipped it over. Like, did it spill? We're like, okay, fine. Katan is a simple stick-like object. Satan is a long stick-like object that requires two hands. Kasatan is a stick-like object that you can hold in one hand, like a pencil. Sanu is a living creature, which would be Ausanuk. Uh, so the K does fall off the end. Sata is a dead creature or an unconscious one. Ach is fabric or cloth. Shana would be a stack of fabric things. Quach is, and you can also have kakwach, is stuff you cup in your hands, like maybe some sand. Uh, sane, ye sane, oops, there's a little, there should be a ye right there, my bad. Uh, it's plural objects, like a whole bunch of different kinds of things, just generally. Sha'at, personal belongings, like luggage. Kajesh would be uh, all of one type of thing, like hand me all those cups that are over there. And then kashajesh, uh, all of one types of thing that require several trips to do it. Or, uh, ach and na. What about like a bolt of cloth? Uh, that would be ach. Ach, so. Yeah. Because for fabric, there's just a certain way you have to carry it. And whether it's a, well, a bolt might fall into shadna. Yeah, that's what it is. Because it's now a bundle. Exactly. A folded towel would probably be shadna. But I think either way would be fine. What about um, furs and leathers for sewing? Ugh. Folded. Folded shadna. Especially if there's there's like two of them, because then you have to carry them like this, right? Because you don't want them to tip over. But one of them, ah, ah. Okay, so it's just saying, grab that fabric thing, fabric-like thing. Okay, now you guys got them all. <laughs> I just want to show them to you. It's okay. Uh, there is. A, I made a card game for them at one point. I'll I'll share a link on our class page in case you want to check it out. I know I got an email or base camp. Supposed to do that. Oh, okay. What, what page was that that your yay was missing from? <laughs> One forty-five. Just ordered a whole bunch of these too. Okay. What is this one? Brilliant folks, puzzle solvers, 
It's better than those little bottle caps used to get and you gotta figure out what the little puzzle is. To break? Yes, and to break what kind of a thing? A rope. Break a rope like object. Which, uh, and so Kling, Klingit does have different types of breaking. If you're breaking a stick, breaking a rope, breaking something generally, those are your three main categories. So if you were like harvesting bull kelp, would you like break? Yeah, if you're gonna, yeah, if you're gonna pull it off, that would, you could, you could coots it. If, uh, if you were a yatsinate, a brown bear, or raven, you could also break beams of light with this verb. And uh, this is also the verb uh, for a heart attack. Is this regardless of the thickness of the rope from like thread to sinew to rope? Yep. I mean, like if you could go break like, and so like, we yak clean. Kone aya we zait de yena kuch. We tik clean wu kuts. The the ferry was coming towards the dock and the big rope broke. That would be wu kuts. What's this one? Another challenging illustration idea. The round object. Not picking up. Are you bouncing it? Not bouncing it. They held the round object? That's close. They grab? Grab, yes. Grab or catch. And again, I, if you got idea, that's why hot soup is on one of these things. Because I'm like, I don't know. I could, I could, I was, I drew a lot of these things. I could take credit for that, but I can, I couldn't solve them all. So this is just a grab or catch? Grab or catch. Specific or, or not specific? Okay. But if you're going to hold it, <clears throat> a different verb. Yeah. Capture. What's this one? Oh, right, let me go back for a second. Some of them do not have and imperfective like you cannot be like so some of these things we call them event verbs there's a time when it didn't happen and there's a time when it happened there's no point in between right yoda verbs i guess and what's this one lighting a fire yes Building a fire, yes. Building a fire or lighting a fire. And it's an interesting verb when you go, because it's got like shu at the end. So shu is the end of something. It's more complicated than that. Like, do we know what de shu is? Haynes, end of the trail. End of the trail, it's also the name of Haynes, right? And so it's the end of something, right? But it's also something more than that, because if you say a shoe, that should mean at its end, but it means half. And if you say a shoe day, which should mean towards the end of me, that means come and get me. That's what Raven says as well. A shoe day, a shoe day. Interesting stuff. Okay, two more or three more. To drag? Yes, to drag. I don't know how to draw these things. So uh, I don't know why that's not a good way to drag a gigantic ball, but it's, uh, you just got to accept it. So yes, to drag something. So is dragging it, drug it, will drag it. If it has a handle, it's a different verb. Don't worry about that. Okay, here's hot soup. The reason why it says hot soup, because I might have to substitute what's going on. What could it be? To blow out a candle, to blow out a flame. 
Mm -hmm. So it is blowing onto something. And so that's why I'm going to have to change this one because there is a verb to extinguish. Put out a light, put out a candle, put out the fire. Uh, and so that that would be yaksha uh, kiss, which is, we got a name for firefighter. Uh, I think it's khan yaksha kiss. Uh, and so I'm going to have to change the illustration because everybody guessed what it looks like. like yeah, the blow out the candles. Like, dang it. What about a dandelion? Oh, or yeah. a bubbles. Dandelions are good. Bubble. Okay, I like this. Okay, so even better than hot soup. I'm going to make, I'll make a note. I'll make a note and then probably like six months from now, I'll be like, why does that say dandelion and bubbles? <laughs> 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 Raven's basket. Uh, so is our homework. And finally, mosquito bite. Yes. So, especially for an insect, is biting bit will bite them. Okay. Just for a mosquito, not like when a child bites you? Just, well, it's for insects. Okay. So this, it would be the same for, uh, it'd probably be the same for a bee sting, even though it's not biting you. But it's certainly for like any, you know, those big black flies that come around, get in your boats, and bite oh. like crazy. Those ones. So insects. Yes. Not animals and not children. Yes. So, so for humans. people and animals and stuff, it's really interesting because I think a it would you would take the S out of there. So it would be a tuk, a watak, and a keakotak. I think that's biting with the front teeth. But it's also the verb that they would use for chewing gum, which was interesting. Because then there's yik, which means to bite with the back teeth. Because that's a different type of biting, right? Like if someone, like for example, uh, that's a nibble, and then there's like a crunch, right? And so, um, yeah, okay. We're deep in the weeds of all this stuff, okay. Uh, we should take our break and then we'll come back and we'll read the story all the way through. Then we'll see, we'll, I think we'll do this version, then we'll do the intermediate version, and we'll see where we are. Then we'll probably listen to the full version and we might run out of time by then. So um, take five. Uh. Uh. Okay, so we have uh, uh, gratitude. Uh, there is a name for this upcoming holiday that I heard from an elder <laughs> and she called it um, <laughs> which is uh, to, it's hoggish day, so it's like pigging, pigging out. So uh, <laughs> it means to like really scarf down your food, and it's not. It's it also means to be kind of stingy. Like um, for me, I would think of the verb as like I'm gonna eat it all up before anybody gets some. So like I grew up with some brothers, and has <laughs> to cut away chips team. Anytime my parents bought chips, like one of the brother, one of the older brothers, like I was the youngest, like as soon as they grabbed it, like no ruffles for me, it's over. So Yekek uh, Yegi was one potential name for this upcoming holiday. But also you could say Yegi, the day people are grateful. Okay, back to Rosh So I will uh, read the sentences. There will be 20 of them. Then I'll turn it over to you fine folks to read them one at a time, and we will work through the translations together. You've already got a bunch of the vocabulary. Kusaka kwan kudzati wega. 
kainach ka awa chun, kashik hu gud. Du kik du iqaq hu washi, kashik hu gud. Ya kik i a du hunch hu hasqaq hu washi, kusakha kwan aw sitin, kusakha kwan ch awa shawa khich. Wudzigid. Adakh aw sita wa yadak kagwesh tu de. Awa aku aq, awa atudakh ke wugudi. Ashk uds ya tikh izani. Awa shad wa kusakha kwan kusi. Gaan wugudi awa ashawa khich. Shud at the aq ka akad awa khud. Wa kusakha kwan kit. Ketli awa aw sa uuk. Kawa yikh iwu ne awa taak a khusati. Acha wa taak a kukas takch. Can I get a reader for the first sentence? Ideally we will all read a sentence. There's 13 of y'all. Okay, can someone read the first one? Yeah, how would he? Goodness, Chish. How would we translate that? And whoever reads, this whole, uh, whoever reads, I'll give you the first chance to translate. Don't just like point out things that you might know or take a guess at, and then just you could just say "achiti dishi," and we'll help you. Um, is, is it we were in the interior? Yeah, well, we were in the interior. I do have notes on this story already. Oh! Okay. <laughs> I do not know that off the top of my head yet. <laughs> Could it never, you never even had to say it? That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, another reader for the second line. Ach aya wud ich ha kusti ak. Sheesh. What do we got there? Um, kusti yi. Um, that's like, is that our way of life? Yep. Kusti yi. And then you got ha right before it. Our way of life. Yeah, away. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, anybody know what kach is? Very. Very. Wutik. Difficult. Our way of life is very difficult. Yes. And what about the ak? There. Yes. Our life was very difficult there. Right. And so uh, you're going to see ak a lot. It just means at that place. OK. Next line. Ah. Kusa ha kwan kuziti wegao. Cheesh. Translation. Uh, the cannibal was born. Not born. Lived. lived. Yes, existed. Existed. Uh, something with a drum. Oh, uh, but it could also be time. Time. Yes. Ah. The animal existed at that time. So then we see wegao, right? So, you know, again, like how we can set this up in terms of telling stories is, you know, you can say chok, and then it's long time ago. And then you can say wegao, and we know it's at that time. And you'll also see when you examine Tlingit stories, They'll move back and forth between perfective and imperfective. Like this really means to exist right now. And there's different ways you could say used to, but didn't, you know, and so it's really interesting the way that stuff works. Okay, next one. Sheesh. Uh, one man or person. 
something about hunting? Yes. One man went hunting. So Kleinach on its own means one person. And then we sort of we got to do a little bit of context things because it usually means alone. Like, so you could say went hunting alone. Uh, if you say Kleinach Wutzeti or Kleinach Wuti, they were all by themselves. And sometimes it has a negative thing, like they were lonely or they were nobody there to help them. Uh, but it could also mean like they just wanted to go solo, right? So one person went hunting. Next slide. Kashyek were good. Kashyek were good. We didn't. We didn't. Let's see. Somebody didn't walk. Let's see. In the past, somebody didn't walk towards the shore or towards the ocean. Or towards yes, it is towards the shore. But in this story, which we'll see like in the larger version, they went hunting up in those mountains. And so it means they didn't come down from the mountain. Oh, that's right. That's the other one. That isn't yeah. down. So in this case, we get like, didn't come back down is what we end up with. <clears throat> okay. What do you say? That's wrong. Do kik do ira kuashi. Sheesh. Translation. Uh, is that one their older sister? Yeah. Younger sister? Yeah. Young, well, so we already got that it's, a, we've established that it's a guy. So that would be his younger brother. And then we get the do iqaqu washi. Do you have any thoughts on that one? Looking for him? Looking for yes. Him. His younger brother went looking for him. We do have du in these, like two of them, and they both do refer to the same person. That person who went hunting's younger brother went looking for that person who went hunting. But think it takes care of it with just there and there. Okay. Oh, next line. Should be easy. It's it were good. Mm-hmm. good. We keep it low. That mean he didn't come down from there. He yes. didn't come down either. You did not come back, you did not come down. Cheesh. Let's keep it going. Cheesh. Um, his older brother. Searching for him. Yes. And then we do have du hunchu has. Do we know what the has does on there? Ach ish has, ach aat has, ach sunny has. Pluralizer for kinship terms. So now it's they went looking for their older brothers. And then ya kikia. Any predictions on that? What's a keek? Younger brother, so pluralizer? In this case, it means the youngest one. Right. So you could say, a keek e a yeet. If you had multiple sons, my youngest son. And you could also say, a hunchu a Yeet, ach kiki a seek, ach shetchi a seek. And unfortunately, the middle children don't have any special 
kinship terms. They're just in the middle. Okay. The cannibals saw them. They saw cannibals. Yeah, so the way that Tlingit works, right? So we, we sort of start, like if we sort of just go through this story in the interior, life was hard, cannibal exists, this guy went hunting, didn't come back, right? So then we get down to younger brother went searching for him. He did not come back. And, and Tlingit does not always give you a clear subject switch, but this sentence says, now we're talking about the next oldest brother. And now he didn't come back. Kiki, our youngest brother, now that's who we're going to talk about. So even though what this verb says is they saw them cannibal, because we're talking about the youngest brother, we would say he saw the cannibal. That's who, and you can mark it in other ways if it's getting confusing, which we'll see in the next sentence. Whoa. Who wants to read that one? Is everybody read? We're only at sentence. Pasaka Quant Awe Shawa Kit. Menchish. Translation The Cannibal. Hit him on the head. That is correct. And so what this CH does on a noun, it could do one of two things. It will mark who's doing the verb. This is the way to think it will do a subject switch sometimes. Because usually once we're talking about somebody, we just assume they're doing all of the actions. If we need to deliberately switch that right away, right? Because one way you could do it is just say something about the cannibal. And then to now say the cannibal does this. Like we see that kind of set up here. The other way is putting the CH on there. The second thing it could do, which is not as common, would be to say what you did it with. So if you said, they clubbed him on the head with a pencil. But in this case, you have the cannibal clubbed him on the head. So again, like now we know this young boy, the youngest brother, he's the one who just got clubbed in the head. Somebody read this one. Translation. Anybody help? He fell. He fell? No. Ah, <laughs> to him. Hold on. Ignore that. <laughs> you never saw it? Okay. Damn it. <laughs> okay. He fell. Anybody want to read the next one? <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, is bag. Well, is bag. What was that ausata verb? Drag. The drag. He put him in the bag. Oops. <laughs> okay. He picked up, so we get a dach ausata. He picked up, <clears throat> and then we get yadok, which is a adolescent boy. Uh, I guess talking, so you get 
tokeni baby. Once those babies start walking around, you have yadakwatsku, shatkiatsku. You got a little boy and little girl. Once they come of age and hit puberty, you got yaduk and shatk. And then you get, once they're sort of truly young adults, like probably late teens, almost to their 20s, yis ka, yis shawat. Then you get ka, shawat, and then you get ka, shan, shawat, shan. So in this case, he picked up, and he's unconscious, like it's built right into that verb, or dead. Right? We don't really know at this point. The young boy, that young boy, then, keep an eye out for this word, kla. It means then, but it has a bunch of different uses. Like it could mean did this thing and then did that thing, or it could also be tying some things together, like at that time, at the same time type of stuff. So keep an eye on like how it's used. It's a, you'll see sometimes there'll be three in one sentence. And here you get bag two day. What is two day? Two is in. Yes, day is towards, yeah. right? And so we, are, we have one verb here, and that's all we need. He picks him up and puts him in the bag. Who wants to do the next one? Whoever wants to read, go ahead. We can't wait. Awe aku aku awe atudak ke wugudi. Sheesh. And there is, you know, there's a technically two verbs in there that we haven't seen yet. So it's okay if we don't know. <clears throat> Anybody know aku ak? Ak. Try? They are trying right now. They are trying. And then kewugudi is to walk up something, usually. So what do you think we got now? From in from inside to duck from the inside, and also look at the way awe is used here, right? He is trying. What do you think he's trying to do? And get out of there. He's trying to get out of the bag. He's, he <clears throat> tries to get out of it. Next line. Sheesh. What do you think we got? The uh, um. The rope. Yeah, the break strings. The rope. Break the string. Tries to break breaks breaks the string. He is breaking these strings, right? So Ashkuts is he's doing it right now. He's breaking these strings. Okay. Next line. Our shot way kusak kusakwan kutsi. So that's um, the cannibal. Over there. Oh, shot. Uh, uh, grab or to catch 
something. Grab her to catch the cannibal. Oh, 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 okay, yeah, right. Club. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> <laughs> right on. <laughs> oh, no. So he grabbed the cannibal's club. Right, so we see it here that relational suffering. Mm -hmm. Almost over. We've almost reached the end of this story. Who's going to read it? I guess I should do just a list next um, time. 3D, away, I saw a hit. Okay. So this Bugudi, I was going to talk about this for a second. What you basically have here is what we call a negative perfective, which means didn't happen. But there's something a little different here. So when we put this, this will follow the exact same rules as the relational suffix. But it's called, it's called like a subordinate suffix, which means you're tying two verbs together. But usually what you get with this is if you looked up the negative imperfective, which would be they didn't go outside, you'd say tesh gan wugud. But if you add the I on there, gan wugudi. It loosely translates to when that verb happened. Okay, so when gan wugudi a shower hitch. Didn't hit him in the head with the club. There's no didn't though. There's no clash in there. So what this one is is like what I was saying with the wugudi. When that verb happened, this other verb happened. What's, what would gone will good be? A lot of times you hear gone de will good. Where's gone? Outside. 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 Gone so. will good. When it came outside, a shower hitch. Oh, when. When the camel came outside, he hit him in the head. That's it. Oh, why did it get longer? Right? I was. <laughs> where? Where is this? Okay. Let me fix it. Okay. Good. I see you. Maybe. You know, whatever. I'll fix it. Every, I'll fix it every time. I think as I sort of cut down, this was, so this was what I was talking about, like cutting it down to a simpler short sentence. Ah. Sometimes the cut and paste doesn't always cut and paste. Okay, there's only four more. Let's go. Shoot on the arc, so I cut our hut. Cheesh. What do we got? Shoot at the ark, cut a cut our hut. He built a fire. Mm hmm. Drag the body towards it. Builds a fire, then dragged it onto it. Oh, I was on. Yes, a cut is on to arrive on top of it. Yeah, oh, what? So we're seeing all these things, like this whole list of things, and it's all fresh. Like these are all things we're just now learning. Okay. 
You think we got there? Because there are dandelions, right? The cannibal's ashes blew? Or he blew the cannibal's ashes? Blew on the cannibal's ashes. Ye a wet. So again, there's that relational, there's that suffix, doing that thing that we expect it to do. Okay, two left. I don't think we did kawayik. You wu ne awe tank ang husati. So there are, there's one noun and two verbs that we haven't really done yet. So, Kawayik is into the air. And it, could also, it could also be into space. Depends how it's being used. You wune is it happened. And then tach ach wusati. Do we know that verb? Wusati, it came to be. It became, it became whatever the thing that has this underlined X on it. So tachach wusati became a mosquito. Gukach wusati it became a cup. Teach wusati it turned to stone. The ashes went to the air and became a mosquito. Yes, it went into the air and became mosquitoes. Achoy tachach kolkas tachach. They're always biting. This is why mosquitoes always bite people. Yuck, hey, gonna cheese you, hon. So that is a 20 sentence story. So I think the next one goes to 30. And then I think we do the full version after that, which, um, well, let me see. Are there any questions? Things you're thinking about as we went through this? I have some like, question, but this is a good example of where Achoe could be used of, like because of this or because of that. But in translation, it, it would be why instead of using because. It could go either way. Like, so because of that or that is why. And it's sort of a context thing. Like, if it's sort of the last sentence, like this is a classic clinkic story construction. This happened, this happened, this happened, that's why it's this way. Right? We got a bunch of stories that are like that. Uh, and so way. so it kind of depends on context, right? So it does really mean because of that, right? Um, and so it could say because of that, mosquitoes always bite people. Like it's just and as you folks continue your journey into Shinget, you will probably end up translating materials. And as you sort of the act of translation, when you go through, you'll say like gone, outside, wugudi, when they went outside, awe, and you, the awe is usually just a separation, it's like a comma sometimes, it just gives you a little bit of logical separation between things. Then they club them on the head. So then sometimes you sort of have that word order, and you're like, okay, let me reword it in English. When the cannibal came out, the young boy hit, clubbed him on the head. So sometimes you're adding information that isn't there in the Tlingit, and sometimes you're switching the word order around so it makes sense in English. Okay. Okay. What happens when we add 10 more lines to this story? I think it's 10. Stage two. Same vocabulary. This is for the saplings. Kusachachwan, Kutil, Kus, Gwaish, Tichisani, Ket, Tacha, Yatih, Utih, Kekwatih, Achun, Awatun, Akwatun, Yanagut, Wugut, Gukagut, Yek, Uagut, K, 
كلهيق وجود أقاق هشي أو ستين يا أنا سكوين أو سكو أقغ سكو We have a new drawing, folks. Uh, is this the word for electrician? I know. <laughs> is that an idea? No. no. I, I know. Like, yes, I, okay. I they know. know it. I, only know I also it. don't know how to draw this. What would you do? I don't know. I only know it because I know like saying how to do it. Oh, wait, Hosaku, a joy, Ausaku, Hosaku. Ah, So, ya on a squain, note that when you close something that ends with oo, it goes to wane. That is something that's going to happen regularly. So, ya on a squain, they're getting to know it. Ausaku, they know it. A guhsaku, they will know it. Ascha, ausacha, a gursacha. Yes, so there is a verb, acha, awacha, akwacha. They're eating cooked food? Not quite. So uh, they're eating it in. It could mean they're eating different things, or they're eating it with little bites. Shawachich, Gudzagit, Ach Ausata, Oh, Ya Anayan, or Ya Anayin, Awaya, Keakwaya. Another thing I don't know how to draw. They're going backpacking. Yes, they are packing it on their back. I did know how to draw. Oh, I think this next one got a lot of criticism. Sha'a. I don't know how to draw this one either. They were like library? Dump it? Huh? Um. Actually, no, I don't think that's right. I was going to say to dump it, like, but that's the wrong. I'm open to suggestions. This verb means a building is situated there. Okay, you're not avoiding the roundabout. No. Our shikuts and our kuts. Our ya and our kuts. A cut with jachin. A kadik hoshin. It hit the ground. Heavy dropped. Something heavy fell on it. Fell on it. shot. Shoot out the ak. A cut our hut, our shauch, our satang. Okay. A little bit more complexity. A few more sentences. You takha aya akeha wutih. Kahaya wutih ha kusti ak. What tea, what ich is you? Chaa wuch is ha and kini. Kusaha kwan kutsiti weka. Kaina ha our soon. Kashiku good. Do kik to Iraku was she. Kahu ayatsu kashiku good. Shiku good a kiki ah. Chayanas kahaya do hun who has kaya kuna she. Aya dark ya shark ark aya ausatini ka aya. Chitlai ayu ausakukusa kwan city. Ashkandi and a good Ashish Ashawa hitch awa Husaka conch awa shower hitch with the geed. A duck out sata where you duck like waste two day. 
Ke awa ya du hiti atla a ye de. Wa ya duk ko a wa ya na tu. Awa aku a awa a tu duk ke wu gu di. Ask oots ya te ke zani. A tu duk ke gu de we du jit wu jachin we kusaka kwan kusi. A ya ye ke u wa hun ga na a. To check on a yuch ya yanas a neatin o a shower hitch. Shoot at the ark, clear a cut our hood. Waskits eh? Waskits a girl said nay, where Kosaka conk it again. I yet check a dying. Pene, we can't hear you anymore. But the Archica, when did it cut out? Well, like a solid two minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> what was I? Where was I? Did I was I reading the story? No, you had finished, I think. Okay, good. Okay. Um Okay. We'll just stop there. Uh when the speakers stop working, I guess that's when the universe says Dewey Jene. So gonna cheese, we will go through this. Uh, next Tuesday, Dachadusha Yagi Ekwachi. Have a wonderful fall closure. <laughs> and we'll see you folks next week. We'll go back into this. We'll go through this one. And I, I won't challenge you folks to translate it. I'll just show you and we'll talk about what the differences are between these. We might recap the first one just really quickly and then come into this one and start showing you some of the differences on how it's getting a little bit more as a master storyteller would say it, then we'll go in and we'll listen to Shah Dag tell us the whole thing. And then we'll start going through line by line and pulling the whole thing apart to see how it works. Okay. It'll teach you, Han. Hopefully these things still work. They won't make them anymore. Say it, Pascal.